welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, thanks so much for stopping by. I'm Liz, and today I wanna to share with you what it's like to travel with a pet overseas and let you know what we've learned in the process of traveling with our dog from Virginia to Japan. All right, so just a little background. So we have a 30 pound beagle mix. And though, because she's 31 pounds, she cannot fly in the cabin because the airlines that we, we checked with, you had the dog had to be, I think it was under 25 pounds and they have to be able to fit in a crate under the seat in the cabin the entire time. And although she's small, she's not that small. So we had to figure out how we were gonna get our dog from Virginia, which is where we were coming from, all the way to Japan. Now, as all of us pet lovers are, you don't want anything to go wrong with your pet. You're concerned about your pet. I know my first thing was, oh my goodness, we're traveling in January. So I know it's cold during that time of year. And the plan was to go from Dulles to Seattle, Washington, which we all know gets cold, and then from Seattle to Yokota. And I think the total flight time from Virginia to Washington was like six hours. So you're like, okay, that's not too bad. But then from Washington to Yokota was another 10 hours. And that's a long time in my opinion, because you also have to look at the fact that you have to check the dog and the dog is checked in before you get on the plane. And once you get on the plane, blah, blah. So the total time she's in her crate is, as you can tell, it was worrisome for me. I was just concerned. Um, and also the fact that she is small. So I was like, oh my goodness, is she gonna freeze? Is this gonna be the worst thing ever? Um, and I'm here to put you at rest that for our dog, she did very well. So if you're worried, I get it. I've been there. We just did it a couple weeks ago. So we're just getting here to Japan and she is 100% back to her normal, fun, loving self. So it can be done. Our dog is crate trained and she's crate trained in this type of crate, the one with the black, you know, that you see in the picture. And that is not approved for the airlines. And so we had to buy, as I would recommend for you, get a crate that is IATA approved, pretty much airline approved. And you can Google that. And with that crate, it was a new crate for her. So what we did was we took her bedding from her old crate, put it into this new crate. And we did that as soon as we got the crate. So it was a couple weeks before we traveled so she could get used to that. And that's what we had her sleep in at night because she used to sleep in the crate at night. We just had to switch it to this crate. So it was a little bit of a process. However, I would highly recommend getting your puppy used to it ahead of time to just make the transition a little bit smoother. And so, yeah, so that's just a little bit of background on us. Um, we will be here in Japan for three years. So yeah, we have her with us. It's been a joy to have her. It has been a little bit of a change though because the house we were coming from had a nice big backyard. And so she could go out whenever she wanted and just relax and run and play. And here, right now we're still in temporary lodging. And in temporary lodging, there is no um, yard obviously because we're in like an apartment on the fifth floor so we have to take her and walk her um and yeah it has it still hasn't been that bad so she's been doing a really good job so yeah so that's just a little bit of background about us and Nala now let me get into the nitty-gritty and the details of traveling with your pet overseas right. so first things first I would highly recommend going to the USDA website it all have linked that in the description below and put the country you're traveling to and it will give you all the requirements. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the requirements for traveling to Japan as of the recording, right? We all know travel requirements can change at the drop of a hat. So please do your own research. And I'm gonna tell you what we went through in the process of getting our dog safely to Japan. All right, first recommendation, start planning as soon as you know you're traveling overseas. That was the most beneficial thing that we did. It was a, as soon as I found out we were going overseas, as soon as my husband, even before we got orders, when we knew we were going, I started doing my research. So back to the USDA website. Once you find out you're going overseas, go to the website, put the information in as to where you're traveling from and to, and they'll break down the steps. So the first step for us was to get a FAVN, F-A-V-N test. Since we have been taking Nala to a local vet, and they don't actually give the Favin test. We had to find a, another vet that gave the test and we actually ended up taking her to Banfield Pet Hospital, which is in PetSmart. So if you have one near you, they might be willing to do it. Now, of course, if you have a military vet near you, that's probably the best bet. However, we didn't realize that. So we took her there. Now, again, 
I took her there as soon as I found out we were moving because they say it could take months to get the results back. And this is the test that determines when your pet can go off of quarantine when you're on the base. Let me explain what I mean by that. So Japan is a rabies free country. So with that being said, you have to get your test, you have to get your dog tested, which is the Favin test, to prove that they've had their vaccinations and they're not bringing rabies into the country. And from the date of that blood sample, so the date I took her to get the Favin, she had to quarantine for 180 days from that date or six months from that date. So because I got that done early, her quarantine period was up right after we got here. It was actually up January 26th and we got here on January 6th. So what does quarantine mean? She was able to stay with us because we were staying on base. What it basically means is they cannot, the dogs cannot leave the base until their quarantine period is over. So because it has taken us time to find a house, we were able to stay with her right here on the base. You could walk her on the base, do everything on base as normal. You just can't take her off the base. And she was able to quarantine with us. Now, if you happen to start the Favin process later, so let's say you got the Favin test in November, and you got here in January. Well, that's only two months. You still have four more months of quarantine. So if you move and live off base, you have to find somebody to watch your pet on the base. So I hear, and I didn't have to do it, but I hear they have um, like boarding places and things you can put your pets and it's gonna come with a cost and there's also a lot of pet sitters on base. So don't stress, if you weren't able to get it done early, it's okay. There are people that are willing to watch your pet for a fee and the earlier you can get started with this process, the better. So there are some steps that have to be done before the fab and if you don't have those done with your pet. And as you can see in this flow chart, it gives you step-by-step step what it needs to be done. All right, so after you got the fab and test, you just wait for the results, right? And oh, just be prepared. When we got the fab and test, it was almost $500. You heard me, $500. I didn't think it was gonna be that expensive. <laughs> and I wanted to take the dog with us, so I had to pay the money for the test. So. It also depends on where you get it done, but if you go to Banfield like we did, be prepared to spend upward of $500 to get that Favin test done. All right, so while you're waiting, start to prepare for your move and for your pet. So get your crate. This is the crate that we used and it worked out well for us. We did put in her crate, we did put her bed from her old crate, like I said, we tra she traveled with that. She has a blanket that we put in. As you can see on the outside of the crate, we also put, um, it reminds me of a hamster water bottle, but it was supposed to be like a leak proof water bottle, what have you. Um, I will tell you, she didn't drink any of it. So every time we got her off the plane in between flights, we did give her water and she did drink. Um, but yeah, she didn't have any accidents and she did really well. Okay, so a couple of things that we did while we were waiting for the results to come back from her famine. So when we scheduled our unaccompanied bags, which is your expedited shipping, we put a large bag of dog food in there because where you're going, they might not have the dog food that you normally use. So we put a big bag in there so that if we needed to transition her from a different dog food, we could do it slowly. We could integrate it into her old food so to not upset her stomach. So something to think about if you're doing an unaccompanied expedited shipping put your bag of dog food in there so that you have that when you guys not when you get here but shortly after you get here another tip when you're looking for your crate again make sure it's iata approved and with that your dog has to be able to stand in the crate and be able to walk told like turn all the way around inside the crate so when you're looking for the size make sure you measure your dog accordingly and then make sure the crate is big enough for the dog to be able to do those things and we also purchased something called an air tag. I had never heard of this prior to this, but apparently my family has. They're like, yeah, an air tag. Anywho, so we bought an air tag. So as you can see in the picture, it's just a little round, almost looks like a battery to me. And what that allowed us to do, we put it in her collar and we could track her. So we could make sure she was where she was supposed to be. And if anything were to happen and we couldn't find her and we got the plane, we could pull it up on our phone and say, oh, well, this is where she was last located. Go find my dog. <laughs> so. Just something else, you don't have to do it. And if you were concerned like I was, and this is your first time doing it, it might be comforting for you to be able to look on your phone and say, oh, okay, I know my puppy's on the plane with me and so forth. So just another tip. All right, so after you get your fabbing back, now you're just waiting to, to travel, right? Your fabbing comes back, everything's good. 
So within 10 days of traveling, so within 10 days of your flight, you have to get something called a health certificate. Now that you can get anywhere. However, I'd highly recommend if you have a military vet near you to use them. We went to the one at Fort Meade in Maryland because that's where we were located and they were amazing. He prepared the they did her visit, of course. They do a health screening to make sure she's good to go and good to travel. And he prepared all the documentation that we needed so that if there was any questions, if they needed them along the way, we had everything. After you get your health screening, what I would highly recommend, so where we went, they made us three copies of the health screening. So I kept the original on us and one other copy, and then I put a pack in the top of her crate. So on the top of her crate, I put a sheet protector and I put it in there and I taped it to her crate. That way, number one, and the, the, I put the sheet on the outside that said exactly where she was going. So again, if anything happened and she somehow got separated from us, they knew, listen, she's going to Japan, Yokota, get her to Yokota, Japan, right? Thankfully, nothing like that happened. However, I was nervous, y'all. This is my first time flying with my puppy and I didn't want anything to go wrong. So I was extra cautious. That is something you can do. And if you don't have sheet protectors, you can put it in a big Ziploc bag on the top of the crate. And it says everything um, as far as where she needs to be. And when we got to Yakota, the vet here that was checking her in before we could even get her out of her crate, thanked me for putting that on there because she had all the paperwork filled out ahead of time for us. So when I got to her, all I had to do was sign some documents and then get out of the crate. Because trust me, after a little over 10 hours of flying from Seattle to Yokota and then sitting on the tarmac and then sitting in there waiting for us to go through customs, she was ready to get out that crate. So I was grateful that I did that. Some other things, make sure any meds that your dog's gonna need within the next 60 days of your flight, have them with you. So for example, um, the heartworm and the flea medicine, she gets it every 30 days. I brought that with me. We also, something else that really helped her with flying was we told our vet, she gets really anxious even just in the car rides. Um, so I was just really worried about how she was gonna do on a plane. So we told our vet and she gave us some medicine to give her to calm her down. And I tell y'all, it was, it, it worked and it worked really well. Um, and it wasn't to the point where again, that she was like groggy or anything, but she was just way calmer than she normally was. So when we were getting her, um, situated to go into her crate and then she wasn't whining, she wasn't crying because let me tell y'all, if she was, I would have been crying and whining. Like, oh my goodness, I don't think this is the right move. So if that's something you're concerned about, talk to your veterinarian and they can possibly prescribe you whatever medicine um, is best for, for your dog and tell you exactly how, to, how it works and how to give it to them. And the last two last tips, of course, bring plenty of food for your puppy. So when you are traveling, so like when we left from Dulles, when we got to Seattle, we had like a eight hour layover, layover, I think it was. So we fed her there, we gave her water there, let her walk, take her to the bathroom, all that stuff and let her get out of her crate. Of course, the entire time because we knew she had a long flight ahead. And then when we got here, of course, we were able to feed her again and yeah, it just takes, it just took way longer, in my opinion, to get things than I expected. So make sure you have enough extra food so when you get here, you have food as well, because again, they might not have the food your dog is used to. So bring plenty of extra food if you can, and yeah, you'll, you'll find that really helpful. One other thing I did that was really comforting for me was when I got to the airport after she got checked in. So the first flight we took from Dulles to Seattle was with Delta. So when we got to the boarding area, for us to board after she was already checked in, when we got to the boarding area, I talked to the flight attendants and said, hey, I just want you to know there's a dog under the plane. I wanna confirm that my dog is on. They were so kind. They actually, they confirmed it was on, but they actually let me talk to the pilots to make sure, just to put me at ease. So. I went up to the cockpit and I talked to the pilot and he said, yes, ma'am, we know you have, we have a dog on board and we'll make sure to take great care of her. Now, when you hear that, you're like, how's the pilot gonna take care of her? Well, what I learned was they had, the pilots have the ability to circulate air under where the baggage is. So they're able to kind of climatize where she was so she didn't get super cold or super hot. So I was so thankful for that. And he was really kind. He was like, yes, you know, we know she's on board and we'll take care of her. So I would highly recommend when you're flying, if you can ask the stewardess to confirm your pets on the plane, or better yet, if the pilot will talk to you and confirm, that's even better, right? And I did the same thing. When we went from Seattle to Yokota, our last flight, I did the same thing. I talked to the flight attendants and said, hey, I'm traveling with a pet. Please confirm that you have her on board. And they did, and they were more than happy to do so. So 
yeah we had an amazing experience um our puppy is way is back to normal as you can see in these videos she has just she's been thriving and it was as if she never even made the flight so nothing to worry about now every dog is different just like we are as people so i'm not going to make any promises i've heard some scary stories about dogs who have traveled and they've gotten here and they just haven't been the same i will tell you that wasn't our experience we had an amazing experience our dog had a great experience um yeah and i would highly recommend if you want to bring your dog with you and you can make the proper provisions to get him or her here i would highly recommend it now one other thing there are pet shippers out there as well we looked into pet shippers but they are thousands you heard me thousands of dollars so i was like <laughs> We knew we, we came here, we were gonna have to spend quite a bit of money too. So I was like, yeah, I just, it wasn't in our budget to spend four or $5,000 to have our dog shipped separate from us. So we went with the option of having her fly in cargo and everything went very smooth. So I hope this helps to put you at ease if you are thinking about traveling or if you already have orders to fly overseas. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. My email's in there, my Instagram's in there. You can DM me, whatever works for you. And I'll be happy to help. Until next time, see you later.